The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of the Catholic TV Network. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, on this Easter day, we come before the Lord asking for his pardon and peace, that we might be worthy to celebrate these Easter mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison.
let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel sing. His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. O Lord, the sheep redeems, Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. 
from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's an intensity to Easter, which I, I just don't think should be ignored. After Lent's 40 days of prayer and, and fasting, after the beautiful liturgies of Holy Week, particularly the past 
three days, the so-called triduum of Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then the nothingness of Holy Saturday. There comes this resolution, which is most mysterious, yet at the same time deeply joyful. It's full of meaning for us who are seeking to make sense out of life. Easter is intense. But specifically, I mean the intensity of that first Easter. And honestly, I hadn't really thought about this all that much. But let me explain. In my parish, last weekend, Palm Sunday weekend, we experienced an outstanding production of resurrection. It's a cantata performed by about 60 people of all different ages. Many of them are parishioners of mine. It's an annual tradition at our parish. And in this cantata, uh, Jesus is not seen, but his voice is heard, which, by the way, reminds me of um, what my parents often expected of me when I was a kid, that I be seen but not heard. But in this cantata, Simon Peter is the protagonist. And it is through his eyes, really, and his experience that we learn the intensity of those days of Jesus' passion and death and resurrection. But the lesson that I learned this year, um, what I was forced to consider, really, is how incredulous Jesus' close friends and his disciples, how incredulous they must have been when the word started to get out that he was alive. The devastation of Jesus' crucifixion and burial, I think, cannot be underestimated by us. I mean, think of it. Think if you were one of those who walked with Jesus. Those close to him had, in many cases, given up their former lives. They'd given up their family, their future, at least as they had, you know, kind of imagined it to be. They gave it all up because they were so attracted to his words and to his person. It was for many a huge risk. I suppose it still is. So now, dead and buried in, in a borrowed tomb, they looked and I'm sure they felt like total fools. Some might have sensed that they had been taken for a ride, if you will. For them, Jesus was, as we would think of, a cult leader. But then, the reality of what happened began to sink in. And I guess I've thought about it before. I've considered it at least intellectually. But the surprise and the sheer joy on the faces of those people who I witnessed, who were playing uh, the part of Jesus' various disciples. That sheer joy on their faces caused me to really think in a new way. These contemporaries of the Lord, they knew Jesus. They knew, knew him as a teacher, as a brother, and as a friend. Honestly, we would not be doing what we're doing right now. We would not be celebrating this Easter Mass and praying together as we are, wherever you might be, if those early disciples had not been so deeply moved and changed by what happened that first Easter. And for those who then had the privilege of actually seeing Jesus and touching him, of eating with him after the resurrection, there was literally nothing, I think at that point, that. Uh, could keep them from giving their entire hearts and lives over without reserve. They were witnesses to the most consequential event in the history of the human person and of all creation. Think of it. That's why some of them and many others throughout the history of the church 
That's why they were willing, so many people, to die rather than to kind of turn back and go the other way, to turn their back on the one who died but is still alive. So it might sound simple, but watching that production last weekend was, as I say, a real eye-opener for me. The other day, I was sitting in, of all places, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, right up here on Mount Auburn Street, just about a half a mile away. And uh, as I was sitting there, actually working on uh, this, my Easter homily, uh, a prisoner of mine came over to say hello. Uh, and at the end of the conversation, he asked me a very deep and actually a very timely question. He asked, and he was very serious, he said, do you think, Bishop, there is a heaven? And do you think I have any chance? And I looked at him square in the eyes and I said, I know there is a heaven. I could not be more certain of that. And I said, I feel that you and I, yes, we do have a chance. By God's mercy, we have a great chance. This is why, friends, Holy Week and Easter takes us beyond ourselves. This is why we come to Mass every weekend, so that we can develop that kind of a close friendship with the one who is our Savior and our friend, so that we can be reminded over and over again a reminder that we really need that Jesus, who did suffer and die, as each one of us will, that he is alive. And he lives. His broken humanity has been transformed from glory to glory. And in his risen body, we have the hope of life eternal. That's why I can say to my friend and parishioner most confidently, yes, we have a great chance. This broken person, this terribly broken world has been redeemed by Christ, you and I. Praise God that we will hopefully see the fulfillment of all this in the coming of the kingdom of God in all of its fullness. Easter, you know, is no ghost story. The tomb is empty. And not because his body was, you know, taken by someone or stolen. As disciples ourselves, we have the eyewitness of these real events and from real people who saw the Lord, who ate with him, who were transformed by their relationship with him. It was a dramatic transformation because they were able to touch his wounds to share a meal with him, to look into his eyes. Oh, he's alive, all right. And I'm convinced of that because I've come to know him in my life. And the tomb is empty. I am sure of it. I've actually celebrated mass in that tomb in Jerusalem. I guarantee you, he is not there. I have seen the place where they laid him. And I do believe. You have a personal story, as do I. A journey of faith that began at baptism. We are all coming to know the risen Christ. And I think that's why Good Friday moves us so deeply each year, because it is our dear friend who we recall suffering and dying for us. And because we have been given this supernatural gift of faith in baptism, we know deep down that Jesus is alive and that he is with us here and always, just as he promised. On this Easter day, friends, none of this is to say that we are not challenged in our belief. Like you, perhaps, I'm up and down, I believe, and then I kind of don't believe. I ask questions. I mean, even this Mass, which we are celebrating here, which I do, do celebrate each day, even this is a challenge to me. To quote a familiar Catholic hymn, what the senses fail to fathom, 
let us grasp through faith's consent. Many of us don't actually recall our baptism, but it was a very significant happening in each of our lives because we were immersed in this mystery of the death and the resurrection of the Lord. Baptism isn't just a sign of faith, it is the cause of our faith. It produces in the one baptized an interior enlightenment, meaning that the faith that is received in, literally invades our soul and causes us to remove the veil of blindness that hides our eyes from the fact of Christ's resurrection. And through the graces that we receive in baptism, we are saved for the glory of eternal life. Dear friends, as we celebrate our Catholic faith this day, we rely on this mysterious gift. By it, we know why that tomb is empty. And we know who it was that rolled up that cloth so neatly and put it off to the side. It is the same Jesus who feeds us from this altar today with his risen body and blood. The key is coming to find in Jesus, our dear friend, the only one who offers us hope before the specter of death. He is our dear friend, and despite that, face death we must. But thanks be to God, we face it in the light of this Easter candle. What happened that very first Easter had and has great implications for us. Because by dying, Jesus Christ destroyed the eternal character of death. And by rising this day, he has restored us to life. Easter is likewise fantastic, I think, in its simplicity. I believe that's why belief in the resurrection of Jesus has actually come down to us today precisely because it's so simple. The early disciples, Jesus' friends, they were just so taken with the fact that he was still with them. They didn't need him to, to bend bars or walk through walls or anything fantastic like that. Just the fact that he was with them that he died for them, that he loved them. Everything else was gonna be okay. And he loves us in our brokenness. And he accepts us in our weakness of faith. I believe that the resurrection that we celebrate this Easter day is the best reason to get up in the morning, to raise your kids, to deal kindly with those around you, particularly those who maybe drive you a little crazy, to discern a vocation. Jesus is the reason for our study, for our work, for our forgiving our enemies, for our taking care of our elderly parents. Jesus is the reason that we can handle the bad days and to live with those that we love and treat them with great respect. Take St. Paul's advice to the Ephesians as words very important for you on this Easter day. Therefore, be imitators of God as his beloved children. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Thank God we have our faith. In a moment, we will renew the promises that we made or that were made for us in our own baptism to live and continue this exciting journey of faith. Get to know better this dear friend of ours because he is alive. He is the way to make sense out of life. 
The Lord is truly risen. And in the end, Jesus is our only hope. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred day and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaim the new covenant. You were to enter with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, and so now we may walk with him in newness of life. Now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew our promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, before we go to the altar on this Easter day, let us present our needs before the Father, praying as we always do in the name of our risen Lord. For the universal church, that with our Pope and bishops, we may proclaim the saving event of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of this world, that the kingdom of the risen Lord may spread through all societies and cultures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been baptized at this time, that freed from the slavery of sin, they will live the life of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this worshiping community, that we will share the joyous news of the resurrection with those we meet, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that having died with Christ, they may, re they may return to life with him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
hear and answer these prayers which we offer you this Easter day, Father, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exult and with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he destroyed our death, and by rising we restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Sean Patrick, our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all those gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and for those who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of help and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And of blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, ordering our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember, Lord, those, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal mystery, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you uh, to Sarah and Ryan for beautiful music on this Easter Sunday. Uh, to our own Kevin Nelson for being the lecturer today, and also uh, to Deacon Chris and uh, Connor Rookie, who are here from St. John's Seminary. Pray for them. They're discerning vocations of the priesthood, and this gentleman right here is being ordained a priest in just a couple of months. You'll be able to watch that right here on Catholic TV. I also want to say thank you to our friends over at WLVI TV, who are also bringing this Mass to many people, our friends out in Springfield, and those who are watching across the country, whatever platform you watch on, Catholic TV is always there for you. And uh, I want to remind you uh, that we cannot carry on. We can't do what we did all throughout Lent and Holy Week and this Easter Sunday without your generous support. So uh, do check out our website, catholictv.com. Just click the, the red donate button and you can help us out. Whatever, whatever gift you can do, it's, it's it all adds up, and we're very grateful for your support so that we continue this important work of reaching out to people and allowing them to come in contact with the risen Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast Come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to the feast that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. We have worshiped God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Bishop Reed, the Catholic TV Network, P.O. Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Join us anytime on Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire, 
or watch and contribute online at 